Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this video. So you may remember last week I did a video all about philodendron hybrids and there was a couple of plants in there that caught my attention. And I thought, you know what? I looked at your comments and I thought, I think we're really missing a video on minty plants and ghost plants. Now, what I want to say before we get into the list I have today, two lists if you want to be really technical. It would seem that mint and ghost are used a little bit interchangeably in the plant community, okay? So a lot of people do use ghost in the way that you would expect, meaning that uh, a plant comes out with a lighter coloured leaf, like a white leaf, and then it fades down to green. But a lot of the time, we're actually getting the word mint used, which would suggest to me that it's becoming a little bit more fashionable to use the word mint. So I have a list of, I think about 18 plants for you today. What I have done is I've separated them out into ghost and mint. Some of the names as we go along will not really indicate that, but I have defined mint in the context of this video to be a plant whereby it emerges with, you know, a really light coloured leaf and it fades to green. So that's what I'm defining as ghost. Mint, I would argue, comes out minty and stays minty. So now that we're all up to date, let's go. Also, I know we're really overexposed. This, this all looked great and then the sun came out, so we're just gonna work with it. You never know, the sun might go in, but it's really rude because it's not been out all day. Now I feel like we're overexposed. Are we overexposed? Mm, a bit, a bit. We're gonna start this list very, very strong with the Philodendron Florida Ghost. Why? Because it is probably the flagship plant that created this whole thing, and I think it's the flagship plant that created the love of this kind of variation, you could say. I won't dredge on about it too long. I talk about it all the time. You know, we all know how I feel about mint. <laughs> But what I want to say, there is a Florida ghost. There is not a Florida ghost mint. Don't worry, I won't keep you too long. I know I chat about this all the time. But I think it was in like 2020, 2021, something like that. A few growers in Thailand came out with the idea, let's just get a Florida ghost that doesn't seem to be pumping out leaves quite as white as normal. I'm going to call it mint. I'm going to charge more money. I used to get people coming to the shop going, hi, I notice you sell Florida ghost. Do you sell Florida ghost mint? I would really like one. And I've personally emailed people telling them, no, that's not a thing. All ghosts are ghosts, okay? Usually, and I might repeat this here and there throughout this video, usually the secret to at least ghost variegation or variegation that needs more time to develop, I would personally say is heat. Yes, light is a factor, but if you warm that thing up, it tends to help, okay? Now don't go, don't go frying plants, I'm just saying. If it's in a warmer spot in summer, you will probably notice that the leaves come out whiter. There you have it. So Florida goes first on the list, coming in strong, because we are doing ghost first. Second plant. I wasn't a hundred percent sure where to put this because I have one of these plants and it, it sort of does both, but for argument's sake, I'm going to put it in this category. So the next plant we've got is Phil is Philodendron. <laughs> It's Monstera White Monster, right? So I have one of these plants and leaves do emerge white. Sometimes they come in like quite a yellowish white actually, and they do fade to green. However, some of the variegation is persistent, but I can't seem to find a concrete pattern across all plants. So for now, I'm going to suggest it's more ghost-like because to be fair, the leaves come in really, really white and they will drop down. So they're not going to stay the same as when they come in. So for that reason, I'm calling it a ghost, even though it's it, you could take it either way, okay? Okay. And remember, this is subjective as hell. I think, and I'd like you guys to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this plant goes by the name Monstera White Monster, or to make it more fashionable, a lot of the time it's known as Monstera Full Mint. I like it as White Monster, I think that's what it was always supposed to be, so we're going to stick with that for this, but I just want to let you know, it. I think, I think it can also be called Full Mint. It's a very nice plant though. It's large form, in case anybody wants to know, in case you're thinking, oh my god, can't have something super big, you know, I already have a tie or whatever, then it is large form. So if you don't want that, then stay tuned and there is an alternative. Next on my list, I had these for a while. I don't do, I might have like one plant upstairs and it's still very small. But the next plant I want to talk to you about is Homolamina rubescens mint. Now, at one point, I actually had this in the other category, in the mint category, but I'm putting it in ghost. Yes, I know, it's called Homolamina rubescens mint, okay? Sorry, my cat's probably going to start making some noise. Hopefully, you don't hear it. But I can see from a lot of photographs, it does, in fact, change to green. The ones I had in the shop certainly did the same. So we're putting it in this category, despite the name. It's a really nice plant, to be honest. Personally, I don't think it's the easiest plant to grow. I'm just going to be completely honest. I've grown easier plants in terms of sizing up and everything else. Sorry, I'm going to have to do some with this cat. <laughs> you do whatever you're gonna do, darling. I'm locking you out. Hopefully the other one isn't in here. 
Now he's just going to cry at the door. If you have one of these plants that you've grown really mature, could you please tag me in it on Instagram? Because I don't actually see many people with this plant, guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I know it's pretty, it's not like, because obviously this list isn't about like what's rare or whatever. It's literally about like what is mint, what is ghost. But I don't really see people with it. So if you have one, you don't have to have got it from me, of course. You can have got it from anywhere. Please tag me in it if it's like big or like plant size. So not plant look, basically. Because I'd love to see how they're getting on. I just found mine really difficult to get off the ground. Maybe they didn't like being in moss. I don't know, but I just found that really difficult. So the next houseplant kind of goes by two names, but I believe it to be more one name than the other. And that is Philodendron Goldii Mint or Thaumatophyllum sprucianum or sprucianum mint. I personally think it's a Thaumatophyllum. Again, if you know the answer in the comments, please let me know, leave a comment. But Thaumatum do look very different from Philodendron. They also feel different. They're a lot more, dare I say, like a lot more waxy, a lot sturdier. And they, the growth pattern is a lot more like a firework. Like it's very distinctive in my opinion. I have a Thaumatophyllum behind me, can't speak today, and it's all right there. That's an African fantasy. So based on the pictures, I'm pretty sure it's Thaumatophyllum. I've got cat hair in my eye. Is it gone? Nope, I'm gonna live with the hair in the eye. I'm calling it mint based on an image I've seen of a few of them together. And in this image, you can clearly see that they are emerging a lot brighter and the older leaves on the plants, because they are very young plants. I don't know if I've included the same picture for you, but the older leaves on the plants are green. So I'm putting it as a ghost. And again, notice the theme. People are calling it mint. I genuinely just think, guys, that that is like the buzzword. Like ghost isn't as much of a buzzword as mint is because in 2020, 2021, mint really took off. So I think people have sort of used that name instead of ghost. But it is interesting nonetheless. I wouldn't personally have this one. Um, not that the list is about what I would like to have, but I think there's some nicer ones on this list. But I found it, so we're including it. The next plant is probably not much of a surprise to a lot of you, and that is the Philodendron Snowdrift. I had one of these, and now I don't. I, I might have sold it, you know just because it started to climb and I think I just thought, oh God, I, I can't, like, I can't deal with another moss pole. So I think I sold it, but it is a very, very pretty plant. It is similar, sort of, to another plant on this list, which I will get to a little bit later. But the new leaves come in like a, I don't want to say it's full white. They're a little bit brighter than ghost a lot of the time and they are more, could you say like speckled or flecked? you know, something like that, and then they will fade down. In order for them to fade fully green, I would argue, takes a long time. So this plant generally tends to stay a lot more, I don't want to say minty, a lot more frosty. But in the sense that it emerges a light colour and it fades down, we're putting it in ghost. Do you see what I am saying? Really nice plant though. I think a lot of people really, really like these. Possibly more than its pricier alternative, which is further down this list. So the next plant I have to talk about is something I featured in in last week's video and I thought hey it fits it actually kind of inspired this video so the next plant is philodendron mayoi by squamiferum and I think the ghostiness comes from philodendron squamiferum because philodendron florida ghost is a hybrid of podatum I think and squamiferum so there's something in philodendron squamiferum that can make a ghosty goo plant right so I think that's where it's come from but as you might expect this one you know the leaves emerge very much in the same way as a Florida ghost and then they harden off to a minty color but then they will eventually go quite green. Now this one will actually bottom out at green. I wouldn't say every plant on this list does. I think it really depends but this one definitely bottoms out as green. It's very nice and it happens to be on my wish list. Why? Because I really like the leaf shape. I think that's very, very pretty. And I think this is going to be a plant, guys, that when it's not mature, it's probably going to look very underwhelming and very crap. But I think once it does mature, it's going to look absolutely amazing. So keep an eye out for that because it's probably going to be more available, I would say in the next few months. So that's very pretty. So this next plant is the plant that I was comparing the Philodendron Florida Ghost to, and that is the Philodendron Whippleway. I don't have one upstairs. I don't have one down here. I do have a big one in the shop, but I don't think it might even be a Ben's house right now, I'm not sure. But I had one and I've had many in my time and they are just the prettiest plants. I'm no doubt showing you my own photo of this because I've got it in my little reference and it's just gorgeous, guys. If you want a plant that just kind of does it all, this is this is your one. It doesn't size up fantastically. It really needs to climb, in my opinion, to size up. Um, obviously, it's down to the individual grower and your conditions. But leaves come out, I am including it because leaves do come out like a pinky 
tone, then they will change to a ghosty white color, then they will change to a mint, then eventually they will change to green. They still have the weird kind of flecked markings that the Philodendron Snowdrift has, so it is still very nice, but I don't know, if you wanted to pick between two of the similar kind of thing, I would be telling you to pick between this one and the Snowdrift. They're similar, but not similar, you know? This one has an added benefit of pink in it. Who doesn't love that? But they're very, very good. I don't know what the price of these are like anymore. I actually don't know. It could be a case of them being quite cheap now, because obviously everything has kind of gone cheap now. So I'm actually not sure. But it's a really, really nice plant, guys, and I urge you to try and get one if you can. You're just going to have a problem sizing them up. I'm going to be completely honest with you. They're not the easiest. Unless you've got some kind of magic touch, you might get a bit of a, almost like a bit of a pink princess situation. Do you know what I mean? Where it just grows a bit like, and like the leaves aren't amazing. So maybe get it on a pole quite quickly. Uh, definitely benefit from a pole with more of like a moss consistency and you might be all right. But it is a lovely plant to be fair. And that's a great photograph. Oh my God, I love that photograph. Right, next plant. This apparently exists, right? I've not seen one in real life and I've not seen many, just to be completely honest with you. This does seem to be a mutation and it doesn't seem to be super common, but this I'm calling the Raphidophora tetrasperma ghost. Again, not many photographs, guys, not many photographs, but I do have one here that does seem to emerge a, a minty color. I wouldn't say it was full white. It does come out a pretty clear mint and then it fades to green. And this is something that would potentially interest me. I don't know whether I'd go far enough to say it would be a wishless plant. Mm, I don't know. I, I really, I want to see more of it. I want to see more of it in collections before I decide, because let's be honest, if there's not many out there, it's probably going to cost a little bit of money. So let's wait and see on that. But I want to point out that it exists because there are tons of people out there that love Raphidophora tetrasperma. To be honest, it's a great plant. I've been considering keeping a regular, just like non-variegated form in here because I think it would look really cute. I'm looking over here because I do have like a baby variegated one in my cupboard. So what I could just do, I think I have some upstairs that are variegated as well. I could just take a, a reverted bit or let one revert and just grow it out into a regular one because they're very, very cool. And no, it's not Monstera Minima, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a nickname. It is Raphidophora tetrasperma. So you will also see it as Monstera Minima Ghost or whatever it is. But PSA, that ain't what it is. So that was the ghost section. I now want to talk about plants that are arguably mint. And again, not all of them have the name mint. So welcome to the internet, guys. Welcome to the internet. First plant I want to talk about is an alternative to the white monster. No, it's not the same, but it is a small form and it is minty. What is it? Pretty obvious. It's Monstera Mint. Guys, it's a really nice plant. I'm not sure how much money you can make off this nowadays. I think for the longest time, you could still make a bit of money for like a two leaf cutting or one leaf cutting. I actually don't know. If you do know, please drop a comment. This is going to be awkward because that's my cat's auto feeder and I've locked them out. Uh, I'm going to leave them where they're at and hopefully they won't scream. If they scream, we'll let them in. Okay, they're already scratching. One moment, guys. One moment. All right. <sighs> bit unfair to lock them out when their dinner went off. What was I even saying? So yeah, I don't know if you can make money from them or not, but honestly, guys, they're a really great plant. They're a really great plant. And in this context, mint is given because basically many plants obviously have this, but Monstera Deliciosa has variegation that forms sort of three layers. So your first layer is usually when you get like a green on green variegated Monstera that I happen to have. The second layer is usually when you get like a mint. And then if you get three layers, you get the beautiful album white. So in a general sense, a Monstera mint is one that has two sort of active layers of variegation. They can be unstable. Personally, the ones I have are extremely stable and they've never gone either way. So they've never gone green on green. They've never gone albo. And be very careful when you're buying them because if you've if you've got someone selling a mint, please ask to see the mother plant because if it's not showing mint everywhere, it's probably just an albo that somebody got a bit lucky with and it happens to have one or two minty leaves. So just be careful when you're buying one. A proper mint, you will know about it because you will only see mint. Mint and green anyway. But it's a really nice Nice plant. Again, small form. If you don't want a large one, great. You can stick it on a pole. Happy days. Happy days, guys. The next plant. Oh my God. So this is very unstable. This is very unstable. I've had a lot of bad luck with this plant. I don't even think I have any anymore. I had a one leaf cutting that I had to reduce it to, to try and keep the variegation. And it just, it just didn't play ball. It did not play ball. This is the Philodendron Burley Marks Mint. Now it's a lovely plant. 
All I'm saying is if you're going to buy one, get one that already has great variegation. Do not, do not be trying to buy one that is of low variegation in my experience. I bought about 10 into the shop maybe a couple of years ago and they were worth a lot of money then when I got them in. So really I've only lost money off them, but they were just so unstable. And you'd think with the way that they grow with all those, you know, extra growth points and stuff that it'd be fine, but it just wasn't. But what I will say is if you do get a nice stable one, you can probably make some money because I still don't really see them around, probably for the reason that they are unstable. But if you do get a nice one, they do look very good and they do look very nice in collections. Again, obviously the mint is permanent, so it comes through as like a fizzy, minty variegation that resembles very much the next plant on this list. Apologies, guys. I know you can hear biscuits being chewed. <laughs> we'll just ignore it. They will stop because they will eat it all. So yeah, really nice plant. Don't say it much. I assume it's due to the headache that is keeping it. So the next plant, however, variegation is very similar. In fact, the Burley Marks Mint is a little bit like a mini version of this. So the next plant, people either love it or hate it. It's the Philodendron Paraiso Verde. And I know you're thinking, that's a bit cheeky putting that in mint. That's very cheeky. But it kind of is, guys. If you get a good one and it, it gets variegation on it, it kind of is mint. And honestly, it does persist and it does stay there. Okay, it does. So for that reason, I'm keeping it in there. I'll probably be showing you a picture of a really variegated one. So I'm kind of proving my point. Now, I get asked all the time, what is the secret to Paraiso Verde being minty? And I'm almost categorically going Going to tell you that I think it's actually heat and not light. I've grown this plant under lights in the shop. They've had more than enough light and the variegation has not really pumped out. But in summer, I had some Pareso at the very top of the shop that I just sort of left to die because I had too many and they were growing too quickly. Well-known fact about Pareso. The ones at the top of the shop where it was the hottest, absolute variegation pumping out. So personally, I'm going to say it's heat. So if you're finding that your Pareso is not variegating, give it some heat and it will probably pump it out. This is not down to, you know, cutting the plant and buying a variegated cutting. That's not going to get you very far and you probably get very disappointed. In fact, a lot of people that have let this plant go, I'm just going to go on a limb and say it's something to do with variegation. It's a nice enough plant. It's not for me. And I can honestly say this because I've tried it. I've tried this plant a lot, guys. But I personally think it would qualify in this case as mint because it does look minty when done right and it does persist. So, hmm, next plant is uh, not my favourite. But the next plant is Monstera Adansonii Mint. I'm calling it that. It has always been known as that, I'm pretty sure. It's had a questionable past, don't get me wrong, but we're not here to talk about it. I'm here to talk about it for literally what it is. And it does appear to be a stable, minty vibe. Leaves, I mean, these ones on this photograph look all right. I do often see a more deformed leaf. I don't know if it's part of the mutation or, or what it is. Um, so it's not my favourite, but again, leaves emerge mint and they stay mint so we're calling it mint and in this case it has been correctly labeled i'm pretty sure you can get these dirt cheap now and we're talking dirt cheap they've been tc'd the house which is wild because i think in like 2020 they were about a thousand a leaf maybe even 2,000 a leaf. God, guys, honestly, it, just imagine going back to 2020 now. We wouldn't even know what hit us. We actually wouldn't know what hit us. But yeah, it, it's all right. It's, again, it's just not for me. So we will carry on past it, shall we? Next plant, I'm using this plant, but it represents a few different plants, okay? This is, I'm showing you now, Skindapsis Exotica Mint, but there are quite a few minty Skindapsises, or Skindapsis. Skin, skin daps us. Yeah. I don't know why I'm pluralizing it. I chose this one because it looks quite pretty. But if you know Exotica, which I actually don't have in the house, which is wild because I would love one, to be honest. But Exotica itself is very, uh, not mint, but silvery. So this is quite a nice little addition. And I actually really don't mind the way this looks at all. Again, there, there are a few other skin dapses I could have put on here, but I wouldn't class them as mint. I would class them as more of like a blue silver. And I have done like a blue silver plants video and they sort of went in that. So I, I'm separating it in that sense, but it's quite a pretty plant. I wouldn't personally choose it based on nothing else, guys, except growth rate. Skin dapsus just, they're lovely, God love them. They're very tough, but they just don't really grow. So if you need something very slow growing, then this is your boy. But again, I think I do have a skin dapsus rare plant index, which I will link below. So if you want to see other skin dapsus, you can get, look at that. Because if it is something slow growing, you can have skin dapsus in general and you can shop around and find lots of different things because there are a lot of different ones, but it's nice and I put it in to represent generally minty skin dapsis. So 
The next plant, this is, I don't want to say it's new, I've not seen it before, but I'm aware I'm a bit out of the loop. This here, guys, is Alocasia Zabrina Mint. And looking at the pictures that I have seen, the mint would seem to persist. So it does seem to come out very minty. I wouldn't say it was a super uniform mint, it does look a bit meh, but it does seem to stay that way. The old leaves I'm looking at, unless they've been growing very quickly, do not appear to be changing to like a regular green. So I've put it in mint rather than ghost. But it looks quite nice. And I, again, if you've got a mature one, I would love to see it because I think this would look very, very pretty. But I'm only really seeing babies. So it's obviously some kind of TC mutation that's come about because, oh my God, Alocasia Sabrina has been going for years and years and years now. It is always in some kind of houseplant shop. It is nearly, if you go to like a boutique shop somewhere, it's nearly always overpriced even now, even now in 2024. But it is a nice plant and I would love to see it mature. I think I've got cat hair in the back throat. One second, guys. Ooh. Okay, next plant. This is not something I knew about. I probably saw it on Instagram and then obviously I've gone for a bit of a Google. But this is a very greeny, yellowy mint from at least the image I'm looking at. So this here, guys, is Monstera Laniata Mint. Now, I've had Laniata in the past, but I actually, it's funny, I stopped selling it because I think I got it confused at some point when I was sort of growing it and storing it with, I can't remember what it was, some kind of Epipremnum. And I just thought, shit, I don't know which is which now because they do look very, very, very similar. So I just sort of didn't sell either and I sort of left them because obviously I didn't want to sell the wrong thing. But Laniata Mint is obviously much bigger than, well, it's, it's not bigger than Epipremnum because Epipremnum can get big, but you know what I mean? It tends to be a lot bigger and the the holes that appear in it appear near the, the, like the main vein that goes down the leaf. So it is very, very nice. Again, the picture I'm looking at is more of a yellowy mint, but who's to say it's not different in somebody else's conditions? I'm not really sure. But it is quite nice though. I, mm, I probably wouldn't have it because I feel like if you get this, it is a pole situation and not a grow it downwards situation, which I'm sure you could do and let it trail. But it looks like this plant is made of bigger stuff. And I think this one should probably be growing up Upwards. So I wouldn't have it, but I acknowledge it's very, very pretty. The next minty mint mint plant on my list, I had to triple check this because I actually wasn't sure, but I have for you guys Philodendron Golden Dragon Mint. Now it does appear to be minty. And I will say that I appear to have found two different mint versions of this plant. I did find one version that looked more ghosty, i.e. it looked like, from the photo I saw, that it emerged a lighter color and it faded down to a green. But then I also found this. I'm running with this because I can't verify the validity of the other one. So I've put it in this category. So I'm taking this one to refer to the plant as just not being super white. And to be fair, the, the picture I might be showing you is showing quite a minty vibe. Newer leaves are coming out with that more yellowy minty tone, which in fairness, Monstera Mint does it, White Monster does it, a lot of plants, sorry I'm adjusting myself, a lot of plants do do that, so that is pretty normal, but it is emerging like that. It does look quite nice. All I will say about Golden Dragon is probably the same thing everybody says about Golden Dragon, and that is that it is really not stable. It's really not stable. You have to get a really good one, and you have to not basically go for half moons, because half moons, obviously, as you all know, cause problems. So they are, they're nice. I don't think I've got any in the house upstairs, no, I don't. They are nice, but oh, just a bit of a chore, to be honest. I'd be more interested actually in the other possible type, which would be that it would come out a ghost color and then fade to green because it'd be like a Florida ghost on steroids. So I would be more interested in that. But this is very nice. No doubt they're charging for it, guys. No doubt they're charging for it. Let me know what you think about that in the comments, because I feel like a lot of people are not going to care about that one at all. Okay, we're now going to tackle a couple of plants that are known as ghost, but I've put them in mint for the reasons I have henceforth explained. So I just, guys, I just wanted to put a Syngonium in here because they're great plants. They're so easy. They're one of the easiest plants you can have, honestly. And they just, I feel like they just impress very easily. You can let them trail and they look okay. You can grow them upwards. They will grow super fast and plush and everything else. But obviously I've put on the list Syngonium Grey Ghost. Now there are a few other others that I would say are minty. Some people would say this was quite silvery. I think it could go either way, if I'm completely honest. I think if I did a video, again, I know I've done one on silver or blue plants, it could go in there, completely acknowledging that. But for the sake of this video, I put it in here because it does remind me a little bit of like philodendron snowdrift and stuff like that. But again, it's very, very easy to grow. It's not as quick 
as the other syngonium, like for example, polyphyllum and stuff like that. It's not as quick, but hey, hey guys, not everyone wants really fast growing plants because then you're buying pots every other month and things are getting bigger and then you have to rehome stuff because you have now filled your entire house. So sometimes, just sometimes, it's better when things grow a little bit slower. But I had to put that on just because we just need some syngonium representation in there. Right, the next plant is again, it's it's got a couple of names and I, I'll be honest, I can't remember the other name for it. But I put on the list, guys, Spathophyllum ghost, which again, very funny because it doesn't really change to green. Let me just check for you. I've got one in the corner. You can probably see it on camera. Where am I at? It's, which side am I on? It's over here. You might not be able to see it. It's very dog-eared because my cats keep tearing it apart. And I went on holiday and it suffered even more because I think it ran out of water. So it's looking very, very bad. I will fix it at some point. But the old leaves on that plant are still very mint. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, Nat. The old leaves are still mint. So I'm going to say that it is mint, even though it is named Ghost. And honestly, guys, I think everyone should have one of these because it's spathophyllum. It's very tough. I know mine looks terrible, but you need to believe me when I say that I've probably neglected it an insane amount for it to look this terrible. This isn't something you can do at home, right? This takes a special kind of talent with neglect to get it to look like mine is. And to be honest, a trim would probably sort mine out. But it's a really nice plant. I They've always done well in the shop when I've sold them. In complete honesty, they've always done fantastically. They ship really well as well. Oh my God, literally. You could probably put this plant through a lot and it will just be fine. It's not dramatic like a normal, you know, spathophyllum that you would have. You probably can't see mine. It's here. I tap a leaf here. That's my other spathophyllum that I have. That's very dramatic, as I'm sure you'll know with spathophyllum. The ghost is not. It's super easy. So if it's something you're thinking about having, I do actually recommend them. They're a lot slower than normal spathophyllum, but they're, they're no less beautiful. Honestly, I really, really like them. They're so sexy. And that, guys is my list of minty and ghosty houseplants. I hope you've enjoyed it. No doubt there are more, okay? No doubt there are more. And if I find more, more than happy to do another video in due course and we'll go through it again. But I just wanted to put it out there that these terms are used interchangeably, but there are still some very, very cool plants on different ends of the budget. You know, not everything's super cheap, but there's some stuff in there that you might not have known about. So if you enjoyed it, guys, please leave a like because it lets me know that I've made a good video that you enjoy. And if you have not already subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you could do that. Similarly, I should have mentioned it at the beginning and I did not because I am terrible at selling myself but I have some merch on I have a different merch on today I have my long boys with the wonderful queen anthurium and the red and blue snake it's actually I don't know if I've ever talked about it but the inspiration for this one was a lot of rock posters from the 90s they would be quite distressed and a lot of them would have like blue and red and stuff like that the, the tons of them so that was my inspiration for it so if you like it and you thought hey what if long boys were a band then this is your t-shirt anyway guys i'm gonna love you and leave you and i need to i need to do a few things today so i'm gonna get on and do those things thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one bye